The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 918 Knowledge Can Break You Up and at him, everyone! It's morning! Valet serenaded the bedroom with a cheerful stomp, rousing everyone who hadn't yet risen. Honestly, darling, Felicity complained, have you ever heard of sleeping in? Yeah, sort of, Valet shrugged. But this island doesn't have much of a nightlife. I know, because if it did, I'd be invited. You're welcome to do whatever, but it's morning, and I'm gonna go let this island know who's boss. A good breakfast later, and Starlight was sitting on the roof of Valet, watching ponies trickle past on the road. So, Valet invited, sounding slightly reserved. I know it's never really a good day to face your fears and all, but you ever wanted to talk about that caballero dude, about that meteor he found? Stuff has been quiet for a day or two, and this isn't a worse time than you're gonna get. If you want to, of course. What do I even ask him, Starlet shrugged. What do I want to know? If he has any idea what that writing on it means, Lima, who's it? Valet shrugged back. Ilista. Starlight glanced away. Valet belched. Excuse you. Well, it's your call. Just fun I'd ask if you want me to come with before I roll away and play with students' hopes and dreams some more. No hurry, though. Starlight frowned, considering. She wasn't panicked. That was when she usually made hasty decisions about sticking her nose where it didn't belong. Like the time she had gone ahead and tried to use her sword to cast nightmare modules. She felt a lot better than she had been while using her magic. She could make a rational decision about this. But she didn't really want to. If I say yes, he'll tell me something I might not want to know, she mumbled. But if I say no... I might be hurting myself by ignoring something when I don't know how useful it is. Why can't I just not have a choice in the first place? Valet stuck out a lap. Yeah, you know what that logic leads to? She pointed a hoof down at the road. There's like some garbage tossed against that wall. Looks like someone's lunch bag. Must be at least a day old since it's nowhere near lunchtime yet. You wanna go see what's inside? Stolly blinked in confusion. What? No. You sure, Valet warns. You don't know how useful it is. You could be sacrificing some sort of edge that would help you keep your friends safe by not jumping down there and opening that bag. Starlight frowned heavily. No, I'm not. It's just garbage. Valet gave her a daring look. You gonna prove it? It's probably garbage, but what if it isn't? That's not the same, Stolid huffed, shoulders slumping. And you know it. Nah, you're right. It isn't. Valet leaned back. But it is taking that logic to its logical extreme. You don't know the bag has nothing good. You believe the odds of the bag having anything good are low enough that checking isn't worth the time and unpleasantness it would take. Because the fact is, time is finite and you can only do so much in your life... And who would want to waste it digging through garbage? The point is, if you try to lean too hard towards doing every last thing you can and spending too much time trying to get an edge, no matter what that edge is against, all the missed opportunities are gonna drive you insane. You gotta just let go and not care. Starlet wasn't sure whether she was more reminded of Glimmer's advice to her or her own advice last night to Jam Jars. Either way, she wasn't thrilled, but sighed, admitting Valet was right. So we shouldn't go then, she said, because I don't really want to know, even though I also do, but the odds of it being helpful aren't very good. All right, you know what? Valet stood up and stretched. You said you didn't want to make this decision, wished it wasn't yours to make, and you're not happy talking about it, so here's one answer coming right up. I'm gonna go talk to him about that meteorite. Coming? Starlight blinked, scrambling to her hooves. What? Why? Valet shrugged, testing her wings. Several reasons. For one, I'm legit curious. I'm not sold anymore on the certainty that this comet was a bad thing, 
and I know for a fact where I came from, so it actually concerns me even more than you. And for two, I know you might not like the idea of being from up there, but I think me not being the only one would be legit cool. So, coming? Starlight worked her jaw. This was what she had asked for. All right, she climbed onto Valet's back. Let's go find him. You do most of the talking. Works for me. Valet flicked a wing, popping Starlight the rest of the way on, and jumped off the roof, wheeling and gaining altitude as she glided toward the school. Yo? Valet knocked on the door. I've literally spent nearly an hour asking for directions. If you're the wrong dude again, I really apologize. The office has his name written on it, Stolly pointed out. I hope it's not anyone else's. Are you looking for Dr. Caballeron? A student said behind him, stepping out of a bathroom and wearing a bow in her mane. Valet blinked and turned around. Ah, uh, yeah, you know him? The mayor nodded and pointed a hoof down the hallway. He's teaching, but class gets out in five minutes. Turn right, then third door on the left if you want to catch him during transition. Hey, thanks! Valet threw her a wave and a wink, then trotted off down the hallway. Caballero's classroom was easy to find. The stallion was lecturing near the door, and the door was open, his voice drifting out into the hallway. Homework can be done with however much collaboration you please, but everyone will need their own essay, he announced. You will need to cite at least five children's stories, with at least three main points and the similarities between them that could point to truth below. Make sure to choose your stories on the same subject. I recommend Hearts Forming or The Elements of Harmony, but any tale of the southern jungles is a personal favorite of mine if you can find them. Anyone who has friends or family with youngsters in the town, you will be primary resources for your peers. Dismissed! A stream of students poured from his room, most either groaning or chatting excitedly. Valet picked up snippets of talk about ball games and still got more than a few winks. The students had cooled their heels now that she had been around for a few days and her reputation as a hard-to-get heartbreaker had spread, but that was merely weeding out the less zealous. Dr. Caballero himself exited last, delayed several minutes by a few straggling students who had similar ideas about staying to chat. When he did see Valet and Starlight, he stopped and blinked. Oh, it's you! Hey, Dr. Dude, Valet greeted with a grin. Any chance you have time to chat? I'm real curious and heard your brain was the one to pick about magical artifacts. Caballero seemed momentarily distracted by Starlight, but then he cleared his throat. Well, a question from you is prestigious, quite, very. Tragically, I have a staff meeting in several minutes, a building over. Ah, bananas, Valet made a show of slumping. Well, any chance you'd be available later in the day? My schedule's got nothing but loitering and nap time. Caballero chuckled. No, I meant tragic for my meeting that they must make do without me. Would you join me for coffee in my office? Magical artifacts are indeed my area of expertise. Coffee? Hmm, Valet rubbed her chin. You know, I've never met someone who liked the effect that stuff has on me, so I'll pass and you can thank me later. But yeah, fill my ears instead? The stallion unlocked the door they had been waiting at earlier, bowing and leading the way inside. The office was large enough to hold a couch, and he pointed them both to it, Starlight slipping past Valet and taking it first. So, Caballero said once they were seated, taking an amiable position in his office chair, what is it you ponies would like to know? Valet bobbed her head. Any chance you could tell us about that meteor chunk you donated to the history professor's archives? Caballero's brow instantly shadowed, but a tiny spark of satisfaction flickered in his eyes as he got up to close the door. I have a feeling, he sighed, it is not entirely for your own sake that you wish to know. Why do you think that? Stolly whispered. Caballero met her eyes, then sighed, sitting back down. 
I knew you looked familiar when I ran into you here. He took a deep drink from a firmus. I would imagine you had quite the surprise seeing the name Cyrus Hollow. Is that the only thing you recognize, Starlight Glimmer, or did they break their promise not to tell? Starlight felt physically forced back by his words as if she had just been hit by a boulder. Anything else he had said faded behind one thing. He knew her full name, and he had just told Valet. Starlight Glimmer? Valet blinked. Wait, you have a... She took in the expression on Starlight's face and stopped. Wow, are you all right? Starlight was all right. Of course she was all right. Glimmer had even told her in person that Valet, knowing or not knowing her name, wouldn't do a thing to affect the future, hadn't she? This was completely fine. She knew she was fine because she still had her saddlebags and a sword inside them and a nightmare module it could activate that could undo any mistaken words, erasing everyone's memories of them. A nightmare module she had sworn never to use. If she was compromised by panic, if she wasn't fine, that would be a lot more than an idle thought crossing her mind. Of course, Caballeron completely misunderstood the look, but she barely heard whatever he said next. It still felt like someone had shattered a vase over her head. Hey! Valet grabbed her shoulders. What's up? You need a quick out? Give me one sign, and I'll have you in the air and far away from here faster than you can blink. Are you still with me? Yes, Starlight breathed, already feeling like she was floating. I'm okay. Caballeron glanced at Valet. I see this is hard for her. You and I could continue? Not my place to ask, dude. Valet shook her head. Come on, Starlight, you can do this. Tell me what's wrong. It's nothing, Starlight panted, feeling like she could easily hyperventilate if she wasn't careful. But she was stronger than this. She hadn't used her magic in more than two days. That was nothing next to how long it took her old headaches to rest away, but Valet was right. She had a friend here. She could do this. She could pull herself together through a monumental force of will. Starlight tensed every muscle in her body and took a deep breath, holding it in for as long as she could. Don't panic. Don't panic. She wasn't going to panic. The shock broke all at once over her like a cold wave, leaving her feeling clammy and bad all over, yet fully in control of her body. She was okay. Starlight slumped against Valet. I'm fine, she reassured, needing something to cling to. I just got scared. Caballeron was watching her in concern. All right, you know what? Valet put a wing around Starlight, shielding her. Spill the beans, dude. You know something about her in particular? I was afraid I did, Caballeron sighed. It is a bit of a story, but what does she already know? More than I do, Valet shrugged. Nothing, Starlight mumbled. I just recognized the name of the place I grew up, and you looked like you remembered me last time. Oh, Caballero watched her. And you reacted this poorly already? I am not so sure you would like to hear about that meteor. Starlight was through the panic and shock. No matter what he said, it wouldn't start that again. Make her upset, maybe, but you couldn't knock down someone who was already on the ground. It was like ripping off a bandage fast instead of slow. Tell me about it, she insisted. It has something to do with me, doesn't it? Well, Caballero rubbed the back of his neck, looking deeply uncomfortable. The truth is, I found a filly who was probably you in the mountains on the day after it fell. Starlight didn't even suck in a breath. She was right about how it would feel. But she was still, along with a mare and a stallion who were both dead, Caballero finished. It looked like a climbing accident, 
They were so close to their goal, they must have been distracted by the sight of it. Don't ask me what two parents were doing, bringing their little filly into a place as dangerous as that, but they did. So I took you and the meteorite chunks and carried you back to town, and asked them to tell you that you were adopted, and never mention your parents. No, I thought it was wrong. That hurt a lot more than she was ready for. Bananas, Valet whispered, Starlight starting to cry into her side. Well, that's not very cool. Her parents literally died in a climbing accident trying to get at this moon glass? Sometimes we have bad luck in life, Caballero shrugged, and other times it is truly terrible. She may have gotten off to a bad start, but look on the bright side. At least she has you now, right? Yeah, Valet got up, holding Starlight against her. Hey, I think I should get her home. Might come back to ask a few questions of my own. Caballero nodded. Of course. Celestia's speed to you, Valet. Oh, and, uh, Valet looked over her shoulder, about to open the door. Any chance you know what the stuff written on it means? Ailista? Caballero frowned and tilted his head. The diagram I have come across a time or two in my studies. The phrase I have never heard of before or since, though I have always been curious about that myself. Ah, oh well, well I shifted Starlight to top her back. Thanks for the talk. See you around. End of chapter 918